So example eight I'm going to do here on page 210 uh, of chapter 10. Now, these, this is a little technique that we need, and it comes up fairly often, but it comes up only fairly often, not really often. If it came up really often, everyone would be able to do it and it'd be no problem. It causes a lot of problems because it, doesn't, it comes up infrequently enough to be forgotten from one time that you see it to the next, but frequently enough that we see it and uh, we lose marks on it. So it works like this. If what's happened in the example eight is they've told us the cosine and they want us to find the sine. And they've told us an extra bit of information, which is a range um, for the angle theta. And the way that I'm going to suggest we deal with this is like this. I'm going to ignore the minus sign, and I'm going to ignore the fact that it's reflex. And I'm going to say cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 fifths. Here's my theta. This is 3 fifths. I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem on this triangle, and I'm going to say that this side here then works out to be 4. Check me if you want, but that's what it's going to work out to be. So this is 3, 4, uh, three, four 5 triangle. So sine theta is 4 fifths. Now, if we had that question with, um, with acute angles, if theta was acute, we'd have finished. But we didn't have theta being an acute angle. We had theta being a reflex angle. So everything here is going to work, except we might have to put a minus sign in. Now, if you think about that, that that's because the graphs are the same. In the acute part of the graph, if I draw my um, cosine graph, the acute part of the graph is the same as the 90 to 180 part of the graph, the same as the 180 to 270, the same as the 270 to 360 parts of the graph, except that some of these parts of the graph are negative, and then the next part of the graph here, look, it's sort of flipped around, but it's um, each section of the graph is the same shape as this bit. So we're going to use that fact again. We use that fact an awful lot. Um, so 0, 90, 180, 270, 360... So, here, this is the cos graph, between 180 and 360 is where my reflex angles are. But it says in the question, theta is reflex and cos theta is negative. So, the, the bit of the graph that we're looking at is between 180 and 270. And if I just think about my sine graph, between 180 and 270, um, the sine graph is here. So the sine graph is negative as well. So if the sine graph is negative, that must be minus 4 fifths. Okay? Now, this is where people that like cast diagrams um, can do this slightly quicker because the cast diagram will tell us which is positive and which is negative between 180 and 270. But to be honest, how long does it take to say, there's a cos graph, I'm looking at this bit, and here's a sine graph, I'm looking at this bit. It doesn't take very long. Uh, and I would say that it's worth spending those extra couple of seconds each time we do one of these questions. It is literally a couple of seconds extra, I think, rather than getting your head around a whole new diagram and a whole new way of, of solving these questions. It's a matter of taste, though. Other people prefer the cast diagrams. This is how I'd recommend you do these, though. Okay, so part B, sine of alpha is two-fifths. Imagine alpha is an acute angle. Draw your diagram. There's our angle alpha. Opposite over hypotenuse is two-fifths, and then work from there. Work out this one by Pythagoras' theorem. Then cosine of alpha is going to be this number divided by five. <coughs> and um, that number divided by five. And then we can work out whether it's positive or negative by using the graphs. So that's a different technique to the one that they're using in the book. But that's one way around it. Now... Um, Actually, now I look at it, this, they've not used the cast diagrams to do this method in the book. They've used another way um, here. And that's perfectly reasonable. We can try it that way. Um, I like this way of doing it as well. The problem with this one is, of course, that we've... Uh, we, so not problem, but the part of the technique here is that we're using the, sine, the, the, the cosine, uh, cosine to sine sort of conversion method with this identity here. And then... We get sine squared equals 16 over 25, so sine is either positive or negative, four-fifths. Well, that's what I got from here. Sine is four-fifths, either positive or negative. We still have to go to the graphs or to the cast diagram to work out whether it's positive or negative, which is the answer that we want. The other problem with this is that it gets a bit fiddlier, uh, the method I've used here, if you want to uh, find a tan 
because we have to use one extra. You know, we need to take the sine and the cos and then do sine divided by cos. It still works though. Um, example nine, <clears throat> I'm sure you can follow through example nine and read through the things. As the only comment on example nine is that it's not particularly a standard question. It's just an example of ways that they can take the facts that we know and mix them up in an unusual way and ask us to solve a new kind of a puzzle. So it's just another example of how to use their identities. So that takes us to the end of 10C.